Today, I'm going to give you a review on factoring from Algebra 1. Factoring means to break apart or divide, separate into groups pretty much. Um, here are a few tips for factoring. First, and most importantly, factor out the GCF. Second, if there are two terms, look for perfect squares or cubes. We're actually going to go over cubes on another day. If there are three terms, try the diamond method. And you may recognize it or remember it um, where you put, like say you have a 12 here and an eight here. You want to, to pick two numbers that multiply to the top number, but add up to the bottom number. So for this diamond, you would pick two and six. 2 times 6 multiplies to 12, but adds up to 8. Um, fourth, we'll look at factor by grouping, and we'll talk about that. First of all, let's look at example 1a. The first tip, factor out the GCF. GCF always first. So now I'm looking at the 3 and the 6. And 3 is the greatest common factor. That's what GCF stands for. Now, with x squared and x, you take the lowest exponent. And now you're looking at what can you multiply by that's going to help you. So now, that's our answer. The goal of factoring, just factoring in general, the goal is to get all the x's to the first power all x's to the first power. So I have that and the GCF is gone and that's good. If I were to multiply this back together, I would get what I started with. Okay, if there's a negative sign first, factor that out also. Now between the 12 and eight, four is the greatest common factor. That leaves me with 3x, and 4 times 2 is 8. Watch the signs. I need negative times negative in order to get the positive. If I multiply that back together, I get a negative 12x plus 8. So that's a good answer. For our next example, <clears throat> I'm looking for the GCF first, always GCF first. There's no GCF. So we're going to try the diamond method. You put C on top, that's the constant term, and you put B on the bottom always. C on top, B on the bottom. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to positive 6 but add up to negative 5. I usually try a couple numbers and then play with the signs. 2 times 3 is 6, but I need some negative signs. Let's see if I make them both negative. They still multiply to positive 6, but now they add up. Once you figure out that diamond, if, and this is a big if, if A equals 1, then you're done. Always remember that. Okay? So the leading coefficient is 1. So once I solve my diamond, I'm done and keep the signs. So I got X minus two and I got X minus three. Remember that, keep the signs. And it's just that easy. If we were to foil this back out, X times X gives you the X squared Outer and inner will give me the negative 5x, and last will give me the 6. Let's try it again with part B. Negative 60 on top, negative 4 on the bottom. I'm thinking maybe 6 times 10, and then I can play with the signs. To get a negative on top, 1 has to be positive and 1 negative. So if I make the 6 negative, that doesn't work out. When I add them together, I won't get the negative 4. So I'm going to make that one positive and this one negative. And that's going to work. And that's my answer. Because the leading coefficient is 1. 
If A is 1, then you're done. Okay, so I have X plus 6 times X minus 10. Let's try one more example with three terms. Hmm, A is not 1. Oh, wait a minute. Got to factor out the GCF first. That's always your first step. So I'm going to factor 2 out. And that leaves me with x squared minus 4x minus 21. And now a is 1. a is 1 because there's no number there in front. Okay, so now I can make my diamond negative 21, negative 4. I'm looking at uh, 7 and 3, negative on the 7. So the 2 is still out front, x minus 7 x plus 3 and we're good now let's review the difference of two squares a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b so if we factor something that looks like this it'll be a quick and easy factor and let me show you what i mean with example four First, I'm looking for GCF. There's no GCF. So now I'm going to set up my parentheses. I'm going to take the square root of x squared, which is x, and the square root of 81 is 9. And now I'm going to make one positive, one negative. This only works if this is a minus sign. If it's a plus sign, we have to use imaginary numbers, and I'll teach you more about that later. I'd like to show you that if I double check this, double check, get it, two check marks. Anyway, if I do first, I get x squared, outer is 9x, inner is plus 9x, and last gives me a negative 81. Notice with the plus minus, those cancel out, and I'm just left with x squared minus 81. So indeed, it's what I started with. So this checks out. And I know I have a good answer. Pause your screen and try part B on your own. Okay. So hopefully you factored out the GCF first, which is 4. And you got x squared minus 9. You recognize your two terms were both perfect squares. So I set up my parentheses. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 9 is 3. Make one positive, one negative. So we have 4 times x plus 3, x minus 3. If you ever factor out a GCF, you have to remember to put it out front. Now I'm going to show you how to factor by grouping with four terms. First, you look for the GCF. There's no GCF in all four terms. So now I'm going to break this into two groups. Um, X squared. Now I'm just looking for the GCF of the first two terms. So that's X squared and I have X plus 6 left. For these two terms, I can factor out a negative 4, and that's x. What can I multiply negative 4 by to get a negative 24, positive 6? And aha, success. If the factored parts match, and only if they match, that means success. So now what you're going to do is set up your parentheses. And in the first parenthesis, you're going to put what's in front. And in the next set of parentheses, you're going to put what matched. But only write it once. Only once. Okay? And that's a big mistake that people make. The part that matches, they want to write it twice. No. If it matches, you write it one time. Notice I have not reached my goal. I still have x squared, so I know I need to keep going. Two terms, I'm going to try 
uh, perfect squares. Okay, the x plus 6 is still here, but the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. Make one positive, one negative. Now all the x's are down to the first power, so I know I'm good. Now, this next example is usually what students find the hardest. When we factor by grouping, but you only see three terms. So also, A does not equal one, and that's what makes this problem a big deal. There's no GCF, there's no way to make A one. So what I'm gonna do now is a new technique. I'm gonna make a diamond, but on top, I'm gonna multiply A times C. So A times C is 48. That's two times 24. That's how I get the 48. And on the bottom, I'm still gonna put B. Now I need two numbers that multiply to 48. Ooh, but add up to 19. I'm not thinking of anything. So I'm just going to start writing some numbers down that multiply until I hit something. Oh, there we go. 3 and 16 work. They multiply to 48, but add up to 19. But if A does not equal 1, you're not done. Ooh, I'm a rapper. You're not done. Okay. So at this point, if A is not one, that means what you got in the diamond is only the split. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to bring the 2x squared down. And instead of writing a positive 19x, I'm going to split it to 3x plus 16x. And you notice that does equal 19x, so I have not changed the value. But now I have four terms that will factor by grouping. So GCF for the first two, and GCF for the second two. What is that, a three? Oh no, that's a two right there. Let's see if that match works. That's 16x and that's 24. So that's good. And yay, I have a match. So I'm going to take this x plus 8 for my first set of parentheses. And what matches, I'm going to write it one time. And that's my answer. All righty. Final example. Give it a try on your own. See if you understood everything from this lesson. Okay, now I'm going to look for the GCF. There's no GCF that goes across. So, oh, yes, there is. GCF is 3. So I can take 3 out and I get 6x squared minus x minus 12. A is still not 1. So I'm going to do my special diamond with A times C. So when I multiply that together, I get a negative 72. On the bottom, negative 1. 9 and 8 look like they might work. Negative on the 9. A is not 1. So I'm not done. Not done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that 3 down. 6x squared. I'm going to split, I get a negative 9x plus 8x and bring the minus 12 down. And notice that this negative 9x and positive 8x equal up to a negative 1x. So now I'm going to factor by grouping and I'm almost done. So 3x comes out, I'm left with 2x minus 3. And a positive 4 comes out, and I'm left with 2x minus 3. Bring the 3 down, set up my parentheses. I got a 3x plus 4 here, and a 2x minus 3 here. 